We have a question from Ben. I have been following Easy Strength for several months now with great results. Well, good. My deadlift has been single leg light kettlebell lifts to improve a muscle imbalance and overall stability. I now feel happy to, to increase the load and want to ask you a question. You may ask me a question, Ben. I plan to continue progressing single legs, but on opposite days start doing two-legged deadlifts. What are the pros and cons in either using a kettlebell or barbell for deadlifts? As a rule of thumb, is one better than the other? Okay, just remember, I'm not a fan of single leg barbell deadlifts. Um, <clears throat> two things about kettlebell deadlifts. Uh, I like if your left foot is down, you hold the, the bell in your right hand. We call that the suitcase position. And when you when you drop that, the, as the bell comes down because you hinge, uh, we call that filling the hole because your arm is filling the hole where the leg should be. That's number one thing. That's what we like to do. That's what I think is the best way to do it. The other thing is when you're doing single leg work, I like you to put your finger either on a wall, on a rack, or even holding a string from the ceiling so that your balance gets taken care of by <clears throat> this external thing. I hate it when I watch people doing single leg stuff and, they're, and their down leg, their knee is shaking all over the place. To me, that's just an invitation to injury. But when you do... The, when you do the barbell, it's two two hands, two legs for most people, almost all the time. I don't, uh, I have a friend, his book is back there, who hurt himself permanently doing a, a circus trick, a single leg uh, uh, with a barbell. And he's, he's done. I mean, he's, 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 he's bought the ticket with that injury. Uh, there's a lot of deadlift variations I like. I like the traditional with the mixed grip. I like the clean grip. I like the snatch grip. Um, those, those all change the position of your back. Uh, I like the heels together one, sometimes called the duck deadlift. We called it something else, but I, it's out of my head now. Um, I like rack deadlifts. I like deadlifts off boxes. I think those are great. I also like the Jefferson lift. That's when you uh, step over the bar with one foot and then you put your hands on the bar. It's kind of, I think that's also called the straddle lift in some places. Um, my friend Ben did a great job. Oh, <laughs> my other friend Ben did a great job uh, doing these with an easy strength protocol. If you do the Jefferson straddle lift, uh, I would su suggest a set of five with your hand, uh, with your like left leg forward, a set of five with your right leg forward. And it is true, if you go online, you might find different variations for the Jefferson and the straddle. But I I know what I'm talking about, but it, it doesn't matter what option you, prove, you, you pick. Um, I think the idea of moving through variations on the deadlift is a great idea. Um, I like the idea of starting in the rack, you know, and, I don't know, spend a couple of weeks you know, an inch above the knee, get it as strong as you can, lower it to an inch below the knee, then, you know, dropping the barbell on the ground and doing uh, heels together deadlifts. Uh, then after a couple of weeks of that, putting your hand, you know, normal stance, hands out the snatch grip. Uh, you'll constantly have to re rethink load and, uh, and you'll get sore in places you never thought. Uh, weirdly, I include the snatch grip deadlift as part of my armor building programs because people get weirdly sore in places that you often get collisioned in American football. So there you go. Uh, very good question. And uh, thanks for asking. It's, uh, it, you know, it's funny. I'm reading this. And I was like, yeah, I should do that too. So I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Ben.